Hello everyone, this is Data Engineer 1, and today we're going to be starting our series on writing data pipelines with Kedro. So today in this video, we're going to be covering what are data pipelines, why do they turn out bad, and we're going to be introducing you to Kedro concepts, as well as understanding the Kedro project structure. So what are data pipelines? Well, I would consider data pipelines as any collection of ordered transformations on data. It's important that the transformations are in a particular order, and it's important that we're transforming data. So that's really what a data pipeline is to me. It's a very generic, flexible term, but I think that it makes sense to anyone who does write any data pipelines. Now, why do data pipelines turn out badly? Well, because of the gen genericness of what a data pipeline can be, there's a lot of anti-patterns that go into writing data pipelines, which cause a lot of problems later on down the line. And this is including uh, hard-coded file paths, incomprehensible transformations, as well as untraceability through a pipeline. So what does that mean? Well, let's take one example of a data pipeline. Let's say that this pipeline is using pandas as its main data source and data transformation tool. We start out by reading a CSV file. Let's say that this is an iris CSV. And then let's just do some transformations on that CSV. So say, for example, we have a species. And then we say that that species is equal to like um, lotus or something. And then we also have another new column where we just set it as like hello. Then finally, we output that data frame to CSV as iris2.csv. So already we have a few problems here, right? The first is that we have these hard-coded file paths. We're saying that there's probably a there's probably a file that exists called iris.csv, and we're asserting that we're going to write the output of this to another one called iris2.csv. What that means is that if this iris CSV were to move, then this whole entire function will already fail. Furthermore, if there's a second place that's writing to iris2, then we also will have an issue. Um, we also here have these hard-coded parameters, lotus and hello. Now, what happens if we want to change the species here? We would have to then update the code directly, and as a result, creating more diffs and more problems later on down the line. Now, these transformations also are a little bit incomprehensible. Like, sure, this one makes a little sense here because of its simplicity, but what if we were to have something like df df2 is equal to like 3, something like this. This kind of transformation you see all the time in um, data pipelines where there's not a clear reason for what they're do for why they're doing something or necessarily what is actually going on. And it makes sense to the writer at the time of writing, but then later on down the line, maybe a month or two later, you're going to look at this code and you're going to ask yourself what is going on. Finally, we have this issue of untraceability. We're relying on file names here as the source of training. I'm sorry, so source of tracing. So say, for example, if you have another pipeline that relies on this first pipeline, we're going to read that CSV, iris2.csv. Um, and then we have another one, which then comes from another pipeline called iris3.csv. Now, we have no way of knowing exactly where does this iris2.csv come from. We would actually have to look directly through the code to find wherever this output is. And as a result, again, with the same problem as before, if we ever want to change this to iris3 or iris4, then this code would break entirely. And so as you can see, there's a lot of issues with the way that native pipelines are currently written right now. Um, but this is a solved problem thanks to Kedro. So Kedro was open sourced last year by Quantum Black. They are an uh, organization that consists mainly of data engineers and data scientists, and they too were running into these same problems. But even more so, they were having issues with how they were scaling the teams and interfacing between the data engineers and the data scientists themselves to create these transformations in this code. So Kedro, the strength of Kedro, 
is actually in this conceptual framework that they've created. So again, they've created this idea of nodes, data sets, and pipelines. So as you can see written here, nodes are kind of like pure transformation functions. Data sets are standardized input and output functions, and then pipelines stitches these nodes and data sets together. So what that actually means, we'll, we'll see right now. What we're going to be using today, too, to take a look is we're going to be using ASCII Cinema. Um, this is a pretty cool application that allows me to record my terminal session and share it with you. So you can actually copy paste uh, any of the code that I write here or any of the things that we do. Um, and I'll share that link uh, at the end of this video or on the description below. So first, we'll start by clearing and we're going to get a copy of Kedro. So Kedro is right there on pip. You can do pip install Kedro and it'll automatically install your copy. Um, I already have Kedro, so it's very, very quick. And now we can use Kedro as a CLI. So Kedro comes with its own CLI with a lot of different functions. The function that we're going to be taking advantage of today is the Kedro new function. So Kedro new will allow us to create a brand new um, Kedro data pipeline. So Kedro new. And we're going to be calling this one uh, Introduction Kedro. OK. And so it'll automatically name the directory. We'll have the Python package name as well. And then it asks us if we want to create our own example pipeline. In this case, we will be creating an example pipeline, and we're going to be walking through it today. So we're going to hit Yes here. And now it creates our Introduction Kedro uh, project here which then has a whole bunch of things inside of the folders. So the project structure here in Kedro um, may look a little bit confusing or intimidating at first, but not to no worry, we're going to be going through each of these pieces uh, step by step. Uh, the first ones that we're going to be covering are the configuration folder as well as the source folder. So the configuration folder is where we hold all of our configurations for Kedro. And then the source folder is where the meat or the bulk of our Kedro work happens. The, the source folder is where we're going to be defining our nodes, as well as defining the input and output for those nodes as data sets. And then we're going to be defining our pipelines in the source as well, which is, again, stitching our nodes and data sets together. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on inside of source. So source has a Python package version of the name, which is, of course, introduction to Kedro. We're going to CD into that folder, and then we're going to find something to look at here. So the first thing that we're going to look at is this pipeline.py. So this is the main pipeline function that is automatically created with this template structure. Now, again, Kedro is actually a very flexible framework. You can structure your code however you want it to. But in the template version, the pipeline.py is the first place where we create our data pipelines. And so as you can see here, Kedro is pulling in um, these other uh, modules, data engineering and data science, and then creating pipelines based on their pipelines. So let's go ahead and take a look at this data engineering uh, pipeline. So we're going to go through here, and that's located under pipelines slash data engineering. And then this one is going to be also pipeline. And so here is the data engineering pipeline. So the way that you create pipelines in Kedro is you use the pipeline class. You pass to the pipeline class a list of nodes. And these nodes, again, represent these transformations on the functions. Now, the way that Kedro works is actually quite clever. Inside of these nodes, you actually pass in an input and an output um, variable, I mean, sorry, parameters. And these parameters take a list or a dictionary or a single uh, parameter, which designates the exact inputs and the exact outputs for that pure transformation function. Now, the reason why this is important is because we're separating the ideas of reading and writing and the ideas of transformation in Kedro. So this split data function, for example, it is the one that does the actual transformation on data. We can take a look, looking at the pipelines, data engineering, nodes.py. 
pi. And right here, we have this split function, split data. If you look here at the input of this function, we don't have to necessarily take a look at the function itself, but the function is just very simple. It just splits training and test data. But if you take a look at the input of the function, it takes two parameters. It first takes a parameter, which is a data frame, and then this example test data ratio float value, and then it outputs a dictionary of strings to any. Looking down here at the pipeline itself, we see that this split data node takes in an inputs and an outputs. The parameters that are going into the inputs parameter, these represent the actual inputs that will be going into the node itself. So here we have this string example iris data. So example iris data, if we take a look at the function itself, it seems to suggest that example iris data is coming in as a data frame. But that's kind of confusing because right here we have a string. Well, that's because this string represents the name of the data that is the data that will come in as the pandas data frame. So when I say the name of the data, I mean it's the name of the data set that is contained in our catalog of data. This is the name that is contained in our catalog of data. So if we go up a few folders and we go back to our configuration, as I mentioned to you, the configuration is very important because this is where we put our data sets. And so inside of catalog.yaml is the collection of the data sets. And in this case, example iris data, exactly as we had in the input before, is right here listed inside of the catalog. Now the catalog is really cool. Um, it's one way to create data sets. There are a few other ways that you can create data sets in Kedro, but the catalog is the uh, basic and most well-used method. Um, all you have to do is you just create a, a dictionary entry in the catalog, as well as add in a type and a file path. And so the type here represents the type of the data set. Now, again, I said earlier that we have these standardized inputs and output functions. And so this is one of those standard input output functions, which is a pandas CSV data set. So this pandas CSV data set, it just wraps that pandas function, which is the pandas read CSV and then pandas to CSV, and wraps those functions and just standardize it as this very simple uh, pandas CSV data set. And then what we do is we pass to this data set a file path that represents where that data set is located. Now in the example pipeline, they actually come with this data. This is the this is the data that is inside the data folder in the root directory under and then the iris data set that we're looking at is the data under the data folder slash raw and there is the iris.csv. And we can actually take a look at that iris CSV if you would like. It's right here under data, 01 raw, iris CSV. So this is the data that we're going to be reading. Now, because we are, we are using inside of this data engineering pipeline, we're using that name as an input to the split data function. It's going to call that pandas CSV data set, and it's going to read that CSV file, turn it into a pandas data frame and then use it as a parameter into our split data function. And this way we are able to get data into our transformation function without having to do any input and output writing inside of the transformation itself. And so again, this separation is very important because it means that we can reuse this node for whatever data set we were looking for. So for example, if we move our data, that doesn't mean that our code is going to break. All we need to do is we just need to update the file path inside of the catalog and immediately, automatically, it's updated for the entire Kedro dataset. I'm sorry, for the entire Kedro pipeline. Now the second portion here is this params. So params is a little bit of a special function um, in that we're allowed to have a specialized data set, almost like a uh, an automatically read data set. Uh, this is inside a config base and then parameters.yaml. So we're looking for the example test data ratio parameter. If you look inside of the parameters, 
you have right here the example test data ratio parameter. So we not only get to specify our data uh, programmatically, we also get to specify our parameters programmatically as well. Uh, and so inside of these configuration files, we can just change our configuration and then Kedro then automatically gets this update. So that's all we're really going to cover for today. Um, we're in the next episode, we're going to be talking more so about the pipelines and about writing your own pipelines. But I think this serves as a pretty good introduction for the understanding of the basic concepts of Kedro and where to look for uh, your uh, kind of important parts of the Kedro uh, project structure. Okay, so if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'm more than happy to help you guys out. And thanks for tuning in on this first video on the channel. Uh, I hope to make many more and I hope you guys enjoy. All right, take care.